dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, Proudly, we hail, starring J. Carol Nash in The Showers of Blessing, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the famed personalities from the world of entertainment join us for your listening pleasure. Our star is the popular and talented actor, J. Carol Nash, and the title of our dramatic story, The Showers of Blessing. It is time now for our first act curtain, which will rise in just a moment. But first, our announcer. High school graduates, you can continue your education and step right into an interesting career in aviation. Volunteer today for the U.S. Air Force. The Air Force will give you the best aviation technical training, and you earn while you learn. When you're selected for the Air Force, you're with the finest type young Americans, with opportunity to move up steadily, and if you desire, to study and qualify for training to become officers. Inquire today about the special opportunities for you at the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force Recruiting Station. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Showers of Blessing, starring J. Carol Nash as the Reverend David Emerson. <laughs> Hilo rose out of the tumbling waters of the Coral Sea, part of the Fiji archipelago. On the lee side of the island, a submerged giant coral reef lay hidden in the quiet lagoon which swept up to the shore. There, several grass huts stood together just off the road which led around the lagoon to the town. In one of these huts, the Reverend David Emerson, young missionary, is suddenly interrupted in his noonday contemplation by the sound of running footsteps and the voice of an islander, Ramu. Reverend! Oh, Reverend! What is it, Ramu? In sky, plane. Airplane? Over the island? In trouble. Motor, him goes... Well, come, let's go. Oh, looks like he's going to try a landing in the lagoon. Plane has wheel, not made for water. Not only that, Ramu, that coral reef. It will be like hitting the wall of a house. Look out! Reef! It's too late. He's got to put her down. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. And I will make them and the places round my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. And there shall be showers of blessing. He made it! He made it! Thank God. He made it. He missed the reef. Quick, let's get a boat out to him. Yes! Say, it's a woman. Are you all right? Well, at this point, I'm just a little damp. The strange thing about the water in this lagoon. It's wet. Here, let me give you a hand. Thanks. Hey, up you go. Uh, thanks again. Well, I guess my luck's holding out. Did you see the reef I barely missed in landing? I think I did. My guardian angel, I suppose. Something like that. All right, Ramu, back to the shore. What happened? Flying from Silver to Pango Pango. My ignition shorted out or something. You fly to Pango Pango often? Only when I happen to be en route from Melbourne to San Francisco. I must say, I never dreamed I'd be fished out of this lagoon by an American. You are an American. I guess so. That is, if Toledo is still in the States. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. Welcome to Gila. I'm David Emerson, the missionary here. That's Ramu. Pleasure to meet. How do you do? My name is Ruth Barkhurst. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of you. The famous flying reporter. You're very kind. I'm not at all sure I should be called famous, and I'm positive that flying should be changed to swimming. All right, we'll make it treading water. <laughs> I quite possibly will be doing just that for a while, won't I? You very possibly will. What do you have in the way of transportation from here? Well, we have a boat that comes every three months. Just left here a week ago. Oh, no. 
Well, I radioed my position. I gave them a fix 179 degrees longitude, 17 degrees, 10 minutes latitude. How was I? I'd say you were right on the button. Well, that's a consolation. Now, if my radio was just working. It's quite a crowd gathering on shore there. Islanders, they'll be rather inquisitive about you, having never seen anyone land right on their doorstep. Well, I'm going to be inquisitive about them. If you don't mind, at least I'll get a story out of this. Now, stand back now. Oh. Back, back, please. Uh, excuse me. What is it, Sula? Her fly plane. That's right. This is Ruth Barkhurst, Sula. Ruth. Ruth. No, her name, Princess. <laughs> you see what Sula thinks of you. Sula's been reading Snow White. Well, let's not spoil the illusion. Well, well, well. Welcome to the island of Gila. Oh, this is Mr. Peabody, Ruth. He buys the copra, runs the store. Hello. How do you do, Miss Barkers? We're certainly honored to have the famous Ruth Barkers with us. And allow me to say you did a magnificent job of landing your plane in the lagoon. Oh, thank you. Anything salvable on it, huh, David? I hardly think so. It's in a good 20 fathoms of water. Oh, oh. Well, anyway, Miss Barkers, should you need anything, you will find the shelves of my store stacked high. The price is too, Miss Barkers. Uh, well, I have to ship everything in, you know. Miss Barkhurst will soon find that out, Mr. Peabody. Oh, Sula. Yeah, Reverend. Take your princess up with you and get her some dry clothing, will you? For Princess Anna. Then you come back to my hut. <laughs> Well, Miss Barkhurst, I suppose you're anxious to get started on your story. Why not? I like your place here. But what are those interesting stones you use as door stops? Those are samples of gold ore. I brought them all the way from the States. You see, I used to think I wanted to be a geologist. That is before I entered the ministry. How long have you been here? Three years now. A little more. And you're not out of your mind yet? No. Why should I be? Well, I don't know. It's... Just so quiet. It's such a placid sort of existence. Oh, I find plenty to do, I assure you. Reverend? Uh, what is it, Ramo? Listen to radio, please. Hot music? Well, we'll see what's on. Ramo has a wonderful ear for music. We get the station at Suva here, and he loves to listen to all the popular recordings. Oh, sorry, Ramo. There seems to be too much interference today. Oh, well. Come back later, Reverend? Yes, Ramo. I think Ramu is coming back to show you his most treasured possession. Oh? Who's the woman in the picture on your desk? That was my wife. Oh? I lost her four years ago in New York. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course. But now, I was saying I find plenty to do hereabouts. In the first place, we have a school, and there must be a teacher. So I'm it. We could use a good teacher here. Please include that in your story, won't you? All right. And then, well, I, I teach the islanders the Bible. Do they like the Bible? Do they like it? Reverend? Oh, uh, come in, Sula. It's Sula. She has her youngest baby with her. Oh, isn't he darling? What's his name, Sula? Him, Zachariah. Well. Do they like the Bible? <laughs> Zachariah have tooth. Well, he certainly does. Reverend? Come in, Ramu. Ramu has friends, I see. A goat and two ducks. Yes, he wants to show them to you. His most cherished possession. See? Fine goat. Yes, I see, Ramu. Him name Bing. <laughs> Hello, Bing. <laughs> what do you call the ducks? Andrew sister. <laughs> but you only have two Andrew sisters. <laughs> Nesting. Soon have plenty Andrew sister. Maybe 20, 30. <laughs> All right, all right now. Out of here, all of you. Goodbye, Princess. Goodbye, Zula. Zachariah's beautiful. Bing, too? Yes, Ramu, Bing, too. Come on, out of here. <laughs> the traffic in my hut sometimes gets quite heavy. It certainly does. Say, uh, I have to run down to talk to Peabody at the store. Care to join me? Oh, I'd love to. Give you a chance to see my church. Come on, let's go. What do you think of my church? Where is it? This is it. The stretch of sand just short of the village. Sort of open air variety. Oh, it's lovely here. Under the palms. Yes. But we'd better get up to the store. I've got to talk to my soloist. Peabody. What's with Mr. Peabody? Well, the islanders are complaining that he isn't giving them fair weight on the copra they sell to him. 
Well, here we are. Well, well, come in, Reverend, and Miss Barkhurst. Uh, oh. You want to buy something? Oh, yes, I think I'll get a baby rattle for Zachariah. Maybe a few lumps of sugar for Bing, and then some grain for the Andrews sisters. Uh, you have uh, cash? Yes, I managed to save my purse. Oh, how lovely, how lovely. I'll get your things for you. Uh, now, isn't this rattle sweet? How much will that be? Oh, let's see. A pound of sugar, corn... Baby rattle, um, a fourteen ninety five equivalent American money. You must ship those things a long way here. Yeah, thank you. And now, Reverend? Oh, nothing for me, Peabody. I merely wanted to beg your generosity to weigh myself on your copra scales. Well, now I hardly think that they've been they... saying I'm eating too much, that I'm getting too fat. But really, Reverend, I well, let's just see about this. Why, what do you know? I've lost weight. I only weigh slightly over 100 pounds. Uh, mere skin and bones. You uh, don't suppose your scale could be wrong, do you? Well, now, come to think of it, the indicator does stick upon occasion. I, I think I might know how to fix that. Well, that's more like it. 195. Uh, that was a slight discrepancy. Yes, yes, Peabody. Now, you wouldn't want to short an islander on his copra, I'm sure. Oh, no, no. Better fix those scales, then. <laughs> Aren't we walking through your church again? We certainly are. A moment ago, you were standing right on the podium. <laughs> you know, I've just had a brief look at things here, but I can already say this. You're keeping your little corner of the universe swept mighty clean. You're very kind to say that. I mean it. How much longer will you stay here? I have at least two years more work here. That long? That isn't so long. Wait. What? Oh, never mind. I thought I heard the sound of an airplane. They'll be sending out search planes. I suppose I should light a fire on the beach. The smoke can be seen a long ways off. Yes. I suppose you have. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, The Showers of Blessing, starring J. Carol Nash, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. <laughs> 